Welcome back to another BTV6 video. My name's Raxor, and I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, did you just upload a normal version of this? Did I click on the same video? No, you didn't. I was going to attempt Elite uh, elite Phase, uh, not just Fountain though, because I believe it's not possible. Seeing how close Normal Phase was the first time, I decided I would try to mix things up this time. We're going to try Elite Phase with this box in the middle instead. I actually tried a few times to do phase with only the fountain and the squares and we'll go over those runs really quickly. All of the squares can actually fit a banana farm which is nice and on my first attempts I used an elite defender for the first tier. Pretty easy win. And this tier was pretty good as I still had all my farming going and by the time tier 2 rolled around we used a mad and we're able to get a banana central. So to be honest, this seemed pretty decent so far. Everything was on par for the course until we hit tier three. Tier three started to become extremely tricky because the reality shield that phase has uh, was starting to get very, very thick. I realized I had two options to really beat this tier. I could either beat elite selling everything and just getting really strong towers but at this point i actually didn't want to sell too much uh, or sell everything and get a paragon so both my options were just to sell if i sold everything and even if tier 3 was beatable by the time we got to tier 4 i wouldn't have as much farming but i think tier 4 still might be possible but again it would be cutting it extremely close I could probably get away with using an Apex Plasma Master or maybe somehow be able to afford a Boomerang Paragon, but then at that point, Tier 5 would actually just be straight up impossible. Most of the time, I don't usually attempt anything unless it's a late game run or I know for a fact that the boss is beatable. With this in mind, I already kind of settled that Tier 3 and 4 would probably be possible, but Tier 4 is basically impossible. Again. If you have to sell your all your farms for defense, then you probably know you did something wrong or it's just not possible. We would only probably be able to afford two Paragons max, even if farming was insanely good. And I knew for a fact those two Paragons would only be a Boomerang and an Apex Plasma Master. So no damage on tier five. So we move away from doing the squares because it's impossible unless someone can prove me otherwise. And I decided to try with a little more space in the center square for a bit more of a challenge. And boy, there is so much room here. It literally feels like I can roll around all around here and it, it's a night and day difference. I, I can farm so much more efficiently with all the space we have here. So did you know that you can only actually also fit four farms here, but there's a ton of room for so many other towers. I will farm fairly efficiently, so if you have any questions on how things work as I farm, let me know in the comments. I use only the free dart to start in this location, so that it can catch the beginning as well as the end. I get three farms rolling and I greed pretty hard until I notice that the dart is starting to struggle. So I finally get my first boat to help the dart out. Again, boat is a great tower in general to farm as well because it, it'll eventually turn into merchantmen, into favored trades, into trade empire, and also does decent damage. We get four 200 farms in a discount village to purchase our first and second marketplaces. I deliberately also make my village a 102 for the extra radius so that I can later throw down a rubber to gold as well to ensure that I can catch any leads and this will turn into a rubber to, uh, uh, sorry, I meant to say a lead to gold into a rubber to gold. The range on the village also allows me to discount my second village, which will eventually help discount other marketplaces into a merchantman as well. So fun fact, I tested it a few times. It's more effective to get the marketplaces before the merchantmen, uh, obviously because farms just make way more money. Eventually we get a favor trades as well, uh, which I don't think I needed right away, but I, cause I needed some defense. But that's all right. I get an Alk and a 023 Sniper, and this will eventually become an Elite Defender as per Tier 1 in my previous attempt. 
I decide not to sell anything and just afford the Elite Defender. Uh, as mentioned, if you have to sell too much of your farming just for defense, it becomes a problem. So we just want to keep as much as we can. Tier 1 actually starts off a bit slow and actually gets a bit closer than I wish it did. <laughs> Uh, but it's alright, because we eventually beat tier 1. When I mean efficient farming, I also don't have auto start enabled, uh, so that I can stop every round to ensure that I'm caught up with as much as I can. Also mid rounds, while you're also fighting, you also upgrade to ensure you get as much cash as possible for every upgrade. We also get a mini Monkeyopolis with two marketplaces which end up giving around 2.25k per round, which is uh, decent enough. I also slow down rounds to ensure that I can get everything as soon as possible. It might not seem like much, but again, every little bit that you can get ahead of time will eventually cascade so that you can afford more farming quickly and afford your defense even quickly. For tier 2 farming, we have a bunch of central markets uh, as well as the merchantman army. I eventually end up selling two of the central markets to finalize and get my MAD as well as an out buff. Again, pretty efficient farming. So while MAD is going, uh, we actually buy back central markets, which is pretty nice. And so fun fact, what I, what I like to do a lot is I target phase and then I use a hotkey to pull up the banana farm so that I ensure that <clears throat> so I ensure that the MAD is doing damage while I put down my banana farm. So if you notice, like I can put down the banana farm, uh, usually the MADs will follow your cursor, but in this case it won't because it's already locked in place while you try and put down another tower. So we buy back our farms into central markets, which sorry, central marketplaces, which is pretty nice. A druid is also here so that eventually it can get Spirit of the Forest as well. I get extra range for Spirit of the Forest for uh, the farming instead of Hard Thorns. And it actually is able to get around 1k per round later, which is decent, pretty nice. So Druid farming this update was pretty good, especially with its buff. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely test it out later on, on the, in later rounds. We finally also sell until we have a Banana Central. If you're wondering why I don't just wait until the end of a round, again, as mentioned, you want to be as efficient as possible. Uh, but in this case, I probably should have just waited till the end of the round because the round was basically over. So we prioritize some more central markets. And again, it seems dumb, but I sell the other marketplaces into a Wall Street as well and get two more BRFs since they will make more long money in the long run. Uh, being able to be overclocked outside of uh, merchantmen. We're able to fit five snipers for sniper farming, as well as four NGs for overclocks. I believe maybe I could have fit one or two more towers if I moved everything over a bit more precisely, but honestly, the setup seemed extremely good, so I wasn't too worried. When you don't need to sell too much of your farming and can afford paragons and your defense, you know you did something right. Thankfully, something right I did do. We are able to afford a degree 30 Apex Plasma Master for tier 3. Uh, again, I'm never settling for a degree 1 ever again and because you literally only need to pay 20-30k more for a 29 degree upgrade. And this absolutely shreds tier 3. Thank god. Uh, and again, totally great because we can focus on generating more cash elsewhere. So I was thinking about another option for even more cash though. Uh, I was either thinking one, we could get a support temple uh, and just buy or actually just buy a Navark straight up. If you're unaware, Navark also gives cash uh, 3,220 with monkey knowledge, uh, only 3,200 otherwise. But 3.2k is still quite massive. It's almost like Wall Street. Wall Street gives around 4k per round. Uh, Support Temple actually gives even more. It gives 5k per round as well and makes everything super cheap also. The easiest way to get a Support Temple with 
uh, five uh, to get 5k every round every time is actually just sacrificing a Sentry Expert into a Sport Temple, or I think it's Sentry Paragon, uh, one of the the tier five, the top top path tier five for NG, so that it will just get 5k per round. It just makes every round super trivial, super easy. I probably could have done that just to be super safe, but I think my setup here is still okay, so I just leave it as be. Eventually, we sell Apex and we buy a Snowstorm into a bunch of Druids, because again, I wanted to test and see how Druid farming did, especially with its buff. Uh, to be honest, it's alright. I'm not blown away by it. It makes some money, but snipers will still usually make a lot more. So tier 4, seeing how well Apex did, I actually just figured, you know what, I would just get Apex again. We also had a degree 5 Nave Arc as well, so I was thinking that along with Nave Arc, it probably would do pretty well. And go figure, it did work out pretty well. However, I started noticing something with the Apex that its attack speed was starting to get really slow. Up to this point, I believe that we hadn't gotten to the hardest part, which would be the last few tiers. I knew that the first few tiers were relatively easy, however if I were to die to something, it would most likely be the last tier of Elite. Last tier of Elite has a lot more HP, uh, each reality shield has a whopping 4 million HP with 5 skulls, so that's a total of about 20, 20 million in the shield and then 16 million for its base HP, so a grand total of 36 million HP. Or it might be 40 actually with one more shield. I have to reconfirm that. But anyways, the HP isn't the problem. Blue Narius also has 40 million HP and even more and can also be tricky with its spawns. The main problem with phase is actually the slowdown. The slowdown amount that it provides is actually insane. On the last two skulls of Elite on tier 4 and 5, all of your towers in range uh, basically get 50% attack speed slowed and it was starting to become a problem especially with confining my space to the middle region only so I needed as much cash as I could and I was hoping if I was okay I could save up hard enough and afford an ace paragon since it has global range and potentially some other paragons ideally I would like a ninja as well four was the limit anyway so I did want some degrees on the Paragons though. I didn't want to base tier 1 because they would not be able to do enough damage to FaZe. So while FaZe dies, we end up buying a big plane to start farming pops for a higher degree on our Ace Paragon. So that I don't need to sacrifice as much money and rely just on money. So we get grinding even more and eventually once we reach round 120, it's the final moment of truth. Was only using this space enough? Thankfully, I farmed 1.4 million pops already out of 2 million pops for degree 20, and 1.4 million pops gives us around 14 to 15 degrees. So we get three more ground zeros, and with the cash input for the three ground zeros, we get a degree 21 ace. Very nice. Apex Plasma again, as it's an easy degree 30, no explanation there. We already used it for the previous tiers. And finally, I wanted an Ascend Shadow, but again, I didn't have enough money. So I settled for the second cheapest Paragon, the Boomer Paragon. As well, Boomerang Paragon will also be able to buff Apex anyways with its buff. So once we calculate the right number of sacrifices, we get our degree 20 as well. Again, every 20 degrees is a pretty large power spike, so degrees 20, 80, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And if you notice something, we actually only had 3k left over. I mean, I didn't sell the farms yet, but it just shows that I got just enough to get this defense. But I still wasn't sure this defense would work. I sell my villages and eventually sell the favorite trades as well that's hiding in there. And I will buy a super brittle as well for extra damage as every little bit of damage is very necessary here. I leave the ace on wing monkey and get my crowing on the carpet bombs. 
I also get a main Moab, which will eventually become a cripple, as well as a glue storm. So we battle phase the last tier. The first two skulls were pretty straightforward, but by the time we hit the third skull, it was starting to get very apparent the slowdown that was happening. It was starting to it starting to make me worry a little bit because phase was starting to get pretty far on the track and everything was just kind of attacking super slowly except for my ace so thankfully i placed my ace pretty as far away as i could on the right side so that it wouldn't get slowed and seriously thank god for ace paragon also being able to be buffed by uh, navark which will help it do so much damage uh we get pretty close actually uh i don't think it's as close as it could have been but i think it's still decently close because i consider anything towards the end of the track really close but finally we're able to destroy elite phase this challenge was probably as tricky as i could have made it while still being limited on space uh, i don't again i don't think it would have been very possible to complete otherwise um, the, the squares itself are just way too tricky. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for some more crazy late game content, crazy boss content, and I will see you all in the next video.